afternoon everybody. Um, I'm Martin Sherwood and I'm here with James on my left. Hi. Uh, we're going to start in just a couple of minutes. We're just waiting for a few uh, stragglers to join us. So bear with us please. Uh, we'll start in, in a, a minute to a minute and a half, something like that. So uh, it's um, very nice weather here in central London. It's suddenly got sunny. Um, hope it's nice where you are. Um, so just to remind you, we're talking this afternoon about investing in media via the EIS. Um, and I hope that's going to be of interest to you. Just waiting for a few more people to join. We'll be with you very shortly. Okay, let's make a start. Um, thank you very much for joining us, everybody. Welcome to our webinar on investing in media via the EIS. I'm Martin Sherwood. I'm accompanied this afternoon by James Swarbrick, uh, who is from Hindsight, and he is a, a, quite an expert in uh, investing in media. He's been doing it now for a substantial period of time. He'll tell you about his experience in a moment. So moving swiftly on, if we can, please. The next slide is simply um, risk warnings, and I am required um, to read those out to you. Um, my compliance manager does that. So your capital is at risk, and you may not get back the amount invested. You should not invest if you are likely to require the capital in the short term. Past performance is not a reliable indicator of future performance. Any stated returns are for illustrated purposes only. No forecast is implied or should be inferred. Tax legislation can pay companies maintaining their qualifying status. Thank you for your patience with that. Just to remind everybody, um, this is a, a CPD qualifying um, webinar. We're running for 30 minutes this afternoon. Stay with us for 30 minutes and you will get your CPD certificate. Uh, we're also going to be doing Q&A at the end. If you have questions during the course webinar, please send us a little email. My colleague will uh, bring the questions in to us. So just uh, um, by way of uh, uh, um, introduction, I'd just like to explain a little bit about Enterprise for those of you who don't know us um, that well. Uh, we used to be at Smith & Williamson. We left uh, six, seven years ago and we set up uh, Enterprise Investment Partners, that's myself and my business partner, Christian. Uh, when we set up on our own, we realized that we were going to have a number of uh, differentiating factors to make us stand out from the crowd, and those can be easily summed up. We believe in staying with the money through the, the process, so raising the money and exiting the money. We believe in, in as much transparency as possible, um, giving investors as much in both before they invest and after they've invested. Um, the complete reverse, if you like, of a blind fund uh, approach where investors have no idea where their money is going. We like to tell people where their money will be going. And thirdly and finally, we only want to engage with top quality asset managers. And Hindsight Media Services is one such. Now I'm going to hand over to James. He's briefly going to introduce Hindsight. Good afternoon. Hindsight was uh, founded in 2009. Uh, most of the principles of the business come from the film industry itself. Uh, my background was uh, finance initially, but I've been working in uh, the finance of the media sector for, for over 15 years now. Uh, we have offices in the UK and Los Angeles. Uh, we're a small boutique team. There's 12 of us in total. and uh, over the last uh, six or seven years, we've begun to turn our hand to enterprise and investment scheme investments, but we've been managing money for private investors, private banks, and, and high net worths uh, since 2004, but as hindsight since 2009. Um, our, our key focus is, is picking out the best of the independent sector, so that's non-studio film and television and video game uh, producers and working with them very closely to 
make sure that our investment is returned uh, with a healthy premium. Uh, some of the companies that we work with include Scott Free, uh, obviously Ridley Scott's company, uh, Anonymous Content, who produced The Revenant with you know, DiCaprio, Spotlight, True Detective series. Um, and we also work with Bayground, who, um, who did Wolf Hall, The Dresser, and uh, uh, we're talking to them about a couple of other big BBC period dramas for, for the forthcoming year. Uh, finally, we, we have a tie-up with uh, Imaginarium Studios, who have a license from Fox, um, the, the, the big studio Fox, to produce video game content based on the IP of Fox. Uh, so the first game is Planet of the Apes, and they're talking about aliens and a whole host of other uh, of their key marquee titles. Thank you very much. Moving on now, this is the agenda this afternoon. We're going to talk about the EIS very briefly, uh, just to remind people um, what it is, how it works, etc., what the tax reliefs are. The main meat of this afternoon's discussion is going to be uh, the whole science of investing in media, and James is going to be covering this and explaining how you go about it and how it actually works. In the last five minutes, we're going to actually move on to talk about the, the offer that we're uh, promoting at the moment, which is a, a fund um, called Hindsight Media Funds. Okay, so that's the agenda. Um, just a few uh, introductory stats on the EIS. I think you all know what the EIS is. It's been around uh, since 1994. It's raised um, to date probably something like 17 billion pounds. Um, the um, exact statistics, they always lag by about uh, two years. So the last uh, complete year that we have stats for is 1415. Um, when nearly 1.7 billion was raised. So there on the left, you will see the graph. There's a spike, obviously, round about the dot-com boom and bust period. Then um, the fundraising numbers went down. But in the last um, five or six years, they've gone sharply up, driven by a number of factors, which I'm sure you're aware of. Uh, the uh, cap on pension uh, um, is, is one of the most obvious ones. Okay, um, so uh, next slide is just uh, reminding you of tax reliefs. Investors get 30% income tax relief. If they've got a capital uh, gains uh, tax liability, they can defer that. So that's a deferral. It's not an outright relief. Uh, and a deferral means a freezing of the liability for as long as you hold the shares. Liability reoccurs but can be a current legislation re-deferred again by reinvesting. Now, you also get freedom from any tax on any profits you make from an EIS. Um, there is also loss relief. We don't plan to make losses. It's there as a comfort um, in the event, unlikely event, that we do. Um, and I'll just cover in a second how that works. And, of course, there's uh, exemption from inheritance tax after two years. So that's very valuable. Uh, it's a very rapid way to, uh, um, particularly for older portfolios, for exempting um, investors from the impact of inheritance tax. So this is a little graphic device showing um, how it works. So you get your 30%, uh, 30,000, if you like, on, on an investment of 100,000, 30,000 back in income tax relief. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have a CGT liability, you get a further, if it's a 28% liability, a further 28,000 uh, uh, relief. It's deferral, as we've seen, but it nevertheless is a relief. So the actual uh, um, net cost of, of your investment is 42% or 42,000. If um, we make uh, um, £1.50, 150,000 back, then the yellow band there is is all tax-free profit. Um, however, if we make losses, on the right-hand side, that's a complete loss situation, uh, you get loss relief. So I think the lesson to be, to be learned here is that the uh, reliefs are definitely favoured or skewed in, in, in favour of the investor. So the investor has, pays no tax on any profits, but gets uh, loss relief on, on any losses. So that's an, an extremely important point. Okay. Let's move on um, and let's start talking about the actual um, business of investing in media through uh, tax efficient vehicles and a bit of recent history. James is going to cover that for us. Thank you, Martin. I mean, I think it's important to understand 
where where we are where we are now in, in relation to where we started. So in in 1997, uh, the government that came in then, New Labour, uh, elected to uh, incentivise the creative industries, and they did that by bringing in something called Section 42, which enabled a capital write-off over three years for investors in film and television. That was subsequently enhanced a couple of years later to get a 100% write-off in one year. Now, those partnerships were extremely popular in the, in the late 90s and, and up to the mid-2000s, but they were, they were somewhat abused and lots of gearing was added to them to increase the tax relief such that it was quite often way in excess of your initial cash contribution. And as a result, the uh, HMRC began to um, shut these down and try to work out a way of incentivizing investment in the creative industries without leaving it open to abuse. And that brought into force the, 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 the regime we have now, which was brought in in 2007. And that is entirely claimable by the producer and nobody else. So if you're a, um, a film producer or a television producer or a video game producer and you want to make your, your project in the UK, the government in 2007 for film said that if you spend every hundred pounds that you spend in the UK, provided the film qualifies, you get a 20% rebate once you've submitted your accounts to the Inland Revenue at the end of production. So that way, it's, the money is going directly to the production. It's, it's, it's a very successful system. Uh, the, it was supplemented by uh, high-end television drama was included within the regime in 2013, and video games uh, was, were included the, the following year, 2014. So it, it's, it's well established, um, and it's, it's very successful in a large number. UK, US and European films come to, to these shores in part for that relief. Um, I think it's really important to stress that investing through the EIS is totally different from in investing in film through film partnerships. So film partnerships relied on accounting principles basically. Uh, uh, and um, stay within the EIS rules, um, they, um, you are guaranteed to get your relief and it will not be withdrawn. So that, and it can be legally challenged if there is some problem. So uh, it's really important to understand that the EIS is law. Uh, and so it makes investment in media through the EIS quite different and, and completely uh, um, safe, effectively. Okay. Um, media a unique asset class, James? Well, I think it's unique because over the last sort of five or six years, a lot of the other industries where there was a government subsidy that were able to be uh, invested in through us have been no longer, no longer available, things like solars and solar power and renewables. So uh, media is, is pretty much the last man standing in terms of you're able to claim a 30% upfront income tax relief and all the other ancillary benefits. But the production itself can also qualify for this uh, government subsidy of a further 20%. So the way we structure our investments is that we, we, we know that the investors had a 30% uh, tax relief. We, we aim to, at the bare minimum, protect the remaining 70% investment by investing against these tax subsidies from, from the UK government and also elsewhere. I think it's important to stress that most other countries around the world have a similar program to the UK. Uh, in some areas, such as Canada and the US, it's, uh, it is often much higher. Up to 40% of the budget comes back from either the state or, or, the, um, or the sovereign government. And by investing against these sort of contracts, uh, we were able to protect the downside. And in addition, most independent media projects are, to an extent, pre-sold. So the they will have an independent sales agent whose job it is to take the idea at the conceptual stage to distributors or TV broadcasters or publishers, in the case of te television and, and video games, before it's made and they offer the, the chance for them to pre-buy the film or the TV show or the video game. And uh, in, in so doing, you're able to build up uh, more collateral against which to invest. So we 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 ensure that 70% uh, of the investment is covered by a government subsidy or a distributor's contract. So that our risk is not whether the, our risk is not performance based; it's credit based. It's on the, the the ability of that distributor to pay when the film or TV show is delivered to them 
uh, at the end of the process. And that is a fully insured event. And in over 500 contracts, in our experience, we've only ever had one uh, uh, one issue with a, with a distributor that couldn't pay. And where they couldn't pay, we simply took back the rights to that territory, which was Germany, and we sold it to a, a different buyer for 25% more than the original contract. So we think this is a very smart way of ensuring that the downside is protected, but uh, there's also quite a lot of room for upside as well. Um, James, just to explain more detail, the, uh, the cash flowing. So um, five million pounds goes into a company. Yeah. Uh, can you just explain what happens to that five million during the three years? Yes, so uh, we, will, we will use that five million and 70% and of it will, will, will probably split it across two or three projects. And that money will go, 70% of the money will go into, um, will be recouped against tax credits and pre-sale contracts with the 30% remaining going in an, in a risk position against all those territories that have not been pre-sold. So, for example, you might have a film where they pre-sold Germany, France, and the UK, and that's what we will advance thus the 70% against plus the tax credit. And the remaining amount will be recouped from sales to the US, to, 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 to Japan, to the whole the rest of the world. It's something like 50 55 major territories which uh, film and, and, and television can be sold to. So you're, you're effectively advancing the money to a producer who's then going off to make the uh, production and then finishing the production and coming back and paying you back more than what you 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 gave to the producer. Yes, we, we for the for the for the tax credit and the pre-sale we tend to lend 90% of the value yep. of the tax credit such that we make a 10% return when the tax credit comes in. And it's very similar on the distribution agreements. Um, so it could be a distribution agreement to Disney in the UK, and the contract could be a million pounds, and we right. will advance 900,000, and when the contract pays back, we'll take a million. So, that's so just to be clear, 70% uh, is it's downside protected. There's 30% risk money, but that, of course, is covered by your income tax relief. So effectively, it's, uh, it's totally downside protected. The downside is protected. Uh, the only question is how much money will you get back from sales outside of the pre-sale, so sales to other territories over and above the pre-sale itself. The pre-sale is typically uh, a UK pre-sale or a US and a UK pre-sale. A successful production will sell all around the world, so vastly in excess of the level of those two pre-sales. Yes, and uh, what, for the risk piece, you tend to get a set of estimates, so the, the sales agent that is pre-sold some territories will then give you, uh, you know, a low and a high estimate as to what he thinks he can obtain for all those other territories around the world. And that helps inform the amount of risk we would, you, know, you should advance against those. Uh, Fantastic. Now, a short of time, um, there's a, a slide here on media stats. Um, I'm not going to dwell long on this, but simply to, to explain that uh, the media uh, um, industry is growing and uh, there is steady growth. Games is actually, quite frighteningly, is, is the largest market of uh, the three between film, TV and games. Games is the largest market, but they're all growing. And I think a film is growing faster than TV, James, is that right? Um, yes, I mean, television is, is quite steady. Uh, film yeah. has, it does tend to spike a little bit from year yeah. to year, but it's the, 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 okay. the long-term trend. So these stats are available for you. They're in our documentation as well. Now let's just move on very briefly uh, in five minutes just to talk about uh, the fund that we're promoting, which is called Hindsight Media EIS Fund. And this is a diversified portfolio across film, TV, and games. We have, um, with Hindsight here, a manager with outstanding experience and track record. We're coming to the track record in the next slide. Um, and Hindsight have got access to top caliber producers. So we saw earlier on that they tend to work with the top end of the independent um, production industry, so non-studio uh, productions, if you like, film and TV productions. So we've already seen that media is a unique asset class within the EIS uh, because it uh, combines the benefit of uh, EIS and production credits, and you can uh, fully protect the downside with a combination of production credits um, and pre-sales. The fund is seeking up to 25 million with a target return of a uh, mid case return of £1.20 for every uh, pound invested. High case is £1.45. Um, 
the functions of these, the low, mid, and high case, are all contained in our promotional materials. Um, and it's based on uh, um, uh, the number of times we turn the money within the companies and the amount of money that the productions make outside of the pre-sales. So that is available um, offline, if you like. James, can you just walk us through your track record? Absolutely. I mean, over the last five years, um, I think we've really honed down what, uh, what we think is, is the right strategy for, for the marketplace. And in, in that period, we've got an average uh, internal rate of return of 4%. Um, we have begun to turn our hands to EIS investments, and uh, we've done seven uh, EIS investments over the last three years with uh, an average return of £1.20 for those uh, investments. I mean, our, our aim within this fund is for each company to turn the money three times within the EIS holding period. Uh, and we, you know, we, we would hope that even if the 30% risk piece is lost, the 70% will be turned three times. Each time we turn it, we'll make between 6 and 10% every time. So you're really absolute worst case scenario should be you're getting back close to one pound um, for your pound invested, even if we, uh, we do a terrible job. So the average life cycle of a, of a production is about just over a year? It's something? about 12 months. I mean, yeah. uh, the average uh, on pre-sale contracts is, is 11 months. In a experience and on tax credits in the UK it can be uh, as, as little as nine months in cases 15 months but really so a number of uh, uh, media funds specialize just in one of these industries only um, hindsight we've decided with hindsight we want uh, investors spread across all um, and you've also got uh, an extreme uh, early 2000s Any more? Track record, we need to say. That's our, our target. Um, we'll probably um, be issuing shares now, um, and there are a number of projects which are sitting, waiting, ready to go. Do you want to walk us through these? Uh, yeah, I think the, the, the key ones is, is the War for the Planet of the Apes, which is a video game based on the, the third in the rebooted series of the, the film, The Planet of the Apes, which is a very big... Uh, studio film, uh, which we're, we're doing the video game of. Uh, Christie adaptation called Crooked House, which stars Glenn Close. Part three of, uh, of Hilary Mantel's Hall, when she, as I said, when she finally gets around to finishing uh, the novel, which is, will be called The Mirror and the Light, uh, which will be some, some time in 2018. So we, a very, you know, a very big pipeline of uh, projects all within the um, uh, investment. Uh, one one aspect we've not covered yet, which I think is really important, is that uh, we intend to deliver a very prompt exit to investors, and that can be achieved very simply because. Um, so have some successful productions, which I think going uh, over a number of years. What what you do is you uh, um, sell off the residual rights to those productions on a given date to a library purchaser, uh, and that enables you then to wind the companies up. So the, this fund is structured uh, as an early exit structure. So uh, uh, we believe that we'll be we'll be exiting within. Um, 
three to four years. In fact, our, the, the fees that uh, we're charging, um, they go down after three years to 50%, and then they fall off a cliff at the end of the fourth. Managers are highly incentivized to provide an exit between the expiry of three years and, and four years. So um, capital preservation scheme, early exit, um, very high quality manager with a really good track record. Um, we think it's an extremely uh, attractive offer and worthy of your consideration. Now, I would like uh, to ask if you have any, um, and hope, I hope you're sending your questions in. Uh, my colleague will give the, your questions to me in a moment. I will read them out and we'll try and answer them. Can I ask a question? Yes, you can ask a question. Um, when you are deferring a gain, how long do you get to reinvest? In, so so, so you, you invest in an EIS to defer the gain, and when that comes back and crystallizes, yep. how long do you have then to reinvest? And you have to do it within the same uh, tax year if you want to uh, avoid um, a, a triggering a, a, a tax liability okay. in that tax year. Um, but you have, you still have up to three more years, but most people will choose to uh, reinvest in the same income tax year. That means they avoid paying any tax. So okay. you can um, indefinitely, under current legislation, you can indefinitely redefer any uh, um, remaining or historical capital gains tax liabilities. Now, um, are you sending your questions in, everybody? I'm sure you've got lots. Um, any more questions from anybody? How many people are still on? Can you see? 20-something. 37. 37. Here we go. So lots of people are still online. I can uh, see there's a question here. So the oh, there's a question. My colleagues are bringing them in. Fantastic. Fees. I think there was a problem with the sound. So the fees are not 50%, as uh, some of us has questioned. Uh, uh, I wish they were. But uh, no, I think what Martin was saying was that after three years, our fees are cut in half. Yeah, our, our fees are divided in half, so they are 50% of what they are in the first three years. So, um, so, the, yeah, so the, the management fee just divides itself in half for the fourth year and then stops. So it falls off a cliff at the end of four years. Yeah, and the management fees are 2.5%. 2.5% ongoing. Yeah. So we also have a... Um, we also have a management incentive, which is um, above one pound twenty, which is our our target return. And that's so twenty five percent above one twenty. So a number of questions here um, from Marion. You mentioned that the downside protection is credit based. Are you concerned that the pre sales and lending against the tax credit? might be considered a loan and therefore questionable under EIS rules? Um, no, that's a good question. I mean, everything that we do, documentation for six years, we've never failed to get the EIS level. Um, the way we structure it is it is just an investment. It just so happens that investment is recouped against these receivables, which are you know uh, tax credits and, and pre-sale contracts. So I think we're, we feel quite comfortable and obviously the revenue will let us know if they, if they wish to <laughs> To challenge it, but uh, everything's pre-approved, so we don't uh, we don't ant anticipate any uh, issues in the park coming up. Uh, question from Michael. He says, due to sound difficulties, I'm sorry about that. Um, I wasn't aware that we'd had sound problems. You missed some of the detail. Yes, we can send you the uh, offer documentation. We will do that right after the end of this session. Alex has asked, does the investor also benefit from a blockbuster? Yes, you bet. Go on. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that, I mean, to be honest, that's the, most, that's the main part of why we do what we do. Yeah. Um, so we, the, the, the upside comes from that 30% risk piece. Uh, and when that's invested, we, we charge a 25% um, uh, premium on that money straight away that will come back hopefully within 12 to 18 months. We also take a net, what's called a net profit position, which means if the film is 
or the TV show or, or the video game is mega successful, we own a, uh, a slice, probably something in the region of 20, 20 to 25% of all revenues in perpetuity once everybody that, who financed the project has been fully recouped. So uh, something like King's Speech, that would be extremely valuable. So if we got a, um, a smash hit like King's Speech, mm -hmm. that could boost the returns enormously, couldn't mm -hmm. it? You'd be looking at, you know, five, ten times your money in that situation. Five but or ten uh, times your money. I wouldn't well, want to promise that you could do that again. But, but, uh, uh, so it's entirely possible. So it's blue sky, if you like. There's, there's no... There's no ceiling or no limit on, on what an investor can make out of this investment. Okay, we have another question now from Paul. Are you using SEIS? And the answer is no, we're not. Um, uh, you can use SEIS for film, but of course it's limited to 150,000. I don't think you can do much with 150,000, can you, James? Uh, well, you can, you can probably do a development deal or two, but yeah. you can't make a, a production. Um, and so, yeah. no, we're not using SEIS. So, so sadly, we're not using SEIS, and we do have a SEIS fund, but it's investing in food and drink. Um, what happened to our old promoter? Um, we're no longer working with them. Uh, we're working with Enterprise. So we've changed. Uh, so that was Tom Jones who asked the question: What happened to the old promoter? Um, so we've worked before. Um, in fact, um, we've worked uh, quite a, a lot in the film partnership days. Um, together and um, there's been a period where we hadn't worked together but th um, this last year we've got together again and uh, in the meantime since we first worked with uh, James and his team they have put on a huge amount of experience so they've uh, I think become hugely sophisticated in uh, investing in uh, um, media and they really know their game and that was one of the reasons that we decided to uh, um, work with them again. Now, how are we doing for time, everybody? Have we got people on the line still? Um, half an hour is just about up. We're, we're very happy to sit here taking more questions. If you would like to ask some more, um, in fact, another one has just arrived. Um, this was Michael. Okay. Um, Yes, I think you probably did see. It was the, the question is, I saw Chancery on television, I think, an undercover expose. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. I mean, one, one of the reasons why uh, we don't choose to work them any longer. Yeah. We, we're, we're, we're much more focused on investment and obviously utilizing statutory tax reliefs uh, such as the EIS. Good. Any more for any more? But very happy to take more questions, so take your time if you would like to send more in. So as I said before, you'll be getting your CPD points um, for this uh, half hour webinar session. Um, thank you so much for joining us and attending. I hope it was of interest. We will be sending um, full documents uh, who um, was on this webinar uh, and of course you'll be getting your CPD certificates as well. Um, we're just going to sit here for a few more minutes in case there are any more questions. Um, so let us know if you've got any further points you would like us to try and answer. Thank you. Another one. Okay, so um, just to make the point again, we understand that there was a sound problem during the course of the webinar, for which we apologize. I really don't understand why that was a um, technical error. Um, so it's important, I think, to tell you that this uh, has been recorded, so um, we can let you have copies of this webinar, which you can use or you can share with colleagues or clients even. Um, and um, so that's available to you. So we'll make sure that uh, a recording to you, um, as I say, after we close. Okay, um, I think that's probably enough this afternoon. 
Um, thank you very much for your interest. Thank you for staying with us um, for the course of this webinar. We greatly enjoyed it. Um, please be in touch with us. We think this is a, a really interesting space uh, with a huge amount of uh, um, potential and opportunity for everybody. So thank you so much, and we'll say goodbye now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Right. Hmm? What? What can we do?